Hi, welcome to SparCast by Spa and Wellness Mexicali Bay. This is Sara, and today I'm talking with Julie Keller Callahan about women in wellness. Um, Julie helms the multimedia American Spa brand, which includes a print publication, multiple newsletters, a website, an active social media community, and more. She is the founder of the American Spa Women in Wellness Leadership Conferences and the American Spa CBD Summit, and the event director for Spa Tech by American Spa. Most recently, she was named 2019 Folio Top Women in Media in the Industry Trailblazers Trailblazers category. Welcome to Sparkast, Julie. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your time. I've, we've got a really interesting topic of conversation, one that is close to both of our hearts, I know. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell me, what inspired you to start the Women in Wellness events? You know, it's so funny. Um, so we started about Four years ago, I just started wanting to do something to acknowledge women in our industry. And so I came up with the idea for the Women in Wellness Awards program. And so that was um, so that was about four years ago. And three years ago is when we announced the first winners of that program. And the thing that really struck me about that is it resonated so greatly with people. Um, You know, you're in media, so you know how hard it is to get people to participate in awards and voting and nominations. And I had a really rigorous nomination process. And we just got hundreds of nominees for that first awards, show, that first awards program. And so I knew that women in our industry really wanted a way to be acknowledged and have their voices heard. And, you know, at the same time, um, everything was going on here in the U.S. with the, the presidential election and just all sorts of really gross things happening there about how women were spoken to and talked about and treated. And, and it really bothered me. And then I went on a retreat with Tara. I, I, I know that you know Tara as well as I do. And she's been doing these women's retreats for something like 20 years. And, and you know, all of the things probably, you know, just they all just came together. And I just realized, you know, I really wanted to do something that was meaningful to women in our industry that could really help them make, you know, proactive changes in their personal and professional lives. And that's kind of where the, the idea for the event came about. So the first one happened... Um, in 2018 in March in New York City. And it was just such a cool day. It was such an inspiring day. I, kn- I know you were there and, and, and it really did a lot of what I wanted to accomplish th- with this event, which was to inspire women to, you know, think proactively about their careers, to think proactively about their lives, to network with other women and realize that women can be such a support structure for each other. And, and it was, it was that and more. And, um, and I was so happy with it. And so we, we brought it back twice in 2019. We had another one in New York in March, and we are bringing one to California, October 28th in Huntington Beach. Yes, the event that I went to first in New York was amazing. And I came back this year again in March. And it was just a really wonderful day where we got to collaborate and network with women from across the industry and really feel the support, but also learn from inspiring speakers at the same time. So congratulations on such an amazing event. Um, I love the content and the concept. And, you know, in California, we've we've kind of taken, you know, every time I feel like I learned something that we can improve upon. And so um, as we go into California, you know, we still have incredibly inspiring speakers, but we have a whole afternoon where we've broken it off into more like workshops so that people really Um, you know, along with being inspired by speakers, I want them to go away with actual tangible takeaways where they sit down in a workshop, where they talk to the speakers, where they really, really work on themselves professionally and personally. And so, so we're really excited about how the West Coast has evolved. And and it is just, you know, it's a learning curve. Every time we do it, we, we learn something that we could be doing better. Fantastic. I love that idea of having workshops so that you're getting involved and perhaps planning uh, for the future of business and really learning from the people around you. That's wonderful. Why is this so important, not only in our industry, but beyond? You know, I, I mean, the, the hard facts are that there is a still a gender pay gap. Women earn 79 cents for every dollar a man makes. And um, that is something that I passionately feel needs to change. Um, you know, I think it's been wonderful to see how things have, have, have evolved from the Me Too movement and to see that there's still 
that there, this is getting a, awareness in the press and that people are acknowledging that there are some differences and some troubling things that are happening with women in the workplace. But the truth of the matter is that needle is not moving very quickly. And I just think that we need to do things that will make that needle move. And I, in my opinion, getting women together to talk about it is the way to do it. I mean, um, I pulled some stats before our interview today and, and, you know, it's, 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 it's so frustrating because, you know, you look at these numbers and, you know, men still, you know, women make up 50% of the U S population. They make 50, almost 50% of the workforce. They frankly have more undergraduate and master's degrees. And yet there's just a significant gap, particularly in leadership. You know, it's, 5% of Fortune 500 CEOs are women, 7% of top executives in Fortune 100 are women. There's still only 24% of women in Congress. You know, and even in hospitality, men are 10 times more likely to be promoted to principal, partner, and president levels than women. So it's, you know, these numbers need to change and women need to gain the confidence and the knowledge base and the experience to change them. And so that that's why this is important to me. And, and I want to do whatever I can to help help shift those numbers a little bit. And and most of all, I have a daughter and she's three. And I really, really want by the time she's in the workplace for this to stop being such a discussion because it, it's frustrating to watch. And I, and I think that we can, we can enact change. I agree completely. And in this day and age, it shouldn't be this backwards. And this, as you said, it does need to change, but why is it not? Why is that needle not shifting? Why is it still such an issue 40, 50 years after it was first discussed and brought to the table as like a, a social impact agenda item? And yeah, we we only move forward by getting together and voicing our concerns and our opinions and helping each other rise to the top. And talking about the Fortune 500 companies, I've seen lots of research that shows that companies that have diversity on the board of directors do better. Companies that have women in senior management positions do better. And investment groups are starting to look at companies that do have board of directors with diversity because they typically do better and there's a greater return on investment. So why is this not changing faster? <laughs> I, I don't know, but I think those kind of statistics are only helpful. And I think that you know what we can do is keep sharing those kind of statistics and those kind of results because it, it's absolutely true. I mean, I think women and men both have incredibly strong things that they can bring to the table. And when we work together, it's it's only good. And I think that the benefits that women tend to have this, this empathy and this, this level of collaboration that is just more common in women are only good for business. So I think, again, um, it's, it's wonderful to see the companies that are forward thinking and that are doing that. And I think that the dollars will start making the decisions because unfortunately that's just the state of the world. And I think once once we really start seeing the financial payout of having women at those levels, we'll see more of it. And so I think that that's, you know, it's a matter of time and I hope it fa happens faster rather than slower. Yes. Ready for when Fiona is ready to enter the workplace. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been the feedback from the women in wellness events so far? You know, I have heard nothing but wonderful feedback. I think, um, you know, women leave there inspired. They leave there, they kind of, they fill their cups at this event for lack of a better word. I think um, it, it really is just such a wonderful day. You know, there have been connections that are made at these events that have resulted in business for women, which I think is really cool. You know, we had um, our first year, we had a speaker, Emmy, she's a plus size supermodel and an advocate for women. And she did this great speech and she met Tammy Pahel, who is the um, spa director down at the Carillon. And so she then did a retreat at the Carillon based on their meeting there. You know, I've met a few people that have gotten jobs from the relationships that they met there. So that to me is the most important thing. I, I met one person who went the first time. She heard one of our speakers, Jen Groover, who's actually coming back on the West Coast. She quit her job, started her own business, and is doing this amazing thing with Jen Groover as a, a life coach for her. So I love that out of this event, there is really meaningful change happening in women's lives. And that 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 is everything that I want to hear that makes it worth every step of the way. What wonderful stories. That's fantastic. So how do you select speakers for the events and what topics are covered? You know, um, the thing that is really important to me when I started this, you know, I think that there's incredible events in this space, uh, in, in the wellness space that teach people about, you know, product knowledge and and those kind of things and marketing and, and those sorts of things. What I wanted to do was create 
um, content and create speakers who are giving women tools to help them grow as leaders. And so, um, you know, while we do have some industry people speaking, either whether it's helping run a workshop or, or in California, we're actually doing a founders panel with two women who have done amazing things from their start to give people kind of a how to. We really kind of went after non-industry specific women who can give them some ideas for growth. You know, like I said, um, we're bringing Jen Gruber back in California because she has a new book out called The More Method about helping people maximizing their potential and limit their self-sabotage. So that was really amazing. Um, we have Lauren McGoodwin, who is the CEO of Career Contessa. She's coming and she's talking about how to help you thrive in your workplace so that you can grow in the place that you are. Um, you know, we, we have another uh, we have another speaker coming who's speaking about happiness because it's really important to be happy as a human being to be productive in your life. And so, you know, we really are just trying to find topics that resonate with people that help them grow no matter where they are. So whether it's a spa director, whether it's an esthetician, whether it is somebody who works for a brand, it really is bringing together women from all walks of the wellness world. And we want to give them tools to succeed in whatever they're doing. Brilliant. And I've really enjoyed all of the speakers that I've seen at the event. So well done on selecting some amazing, inspiring people. And I think it's a great idea to have people outside the industry because they can um, provide a different perspective on different areas of business and industry than those inside our industry. We can always learn from all areas. So who should attend the Women in Wellness events and what will they get out of it? I really think anyone who touches the wellness world in any way can be, can get something out of this wellness event. And, and I will point out that we welcome men as well. Um, you know, men and women who want to learn about ways to help women succeed in their lives are welcome and will get something out of this event. Um, you know, it's, I do have a session actually this time around is one of our workshops and it's being run by Michael Tompkins, who is a dear friend of mine who also runs Hutchison Consulting, which is a recruiting in company in the industry. And Tara from Tara Spa Therapy, who I mentioned earlier, who does these beautiful retreats, you know, they're doing a session together about how female traits can influence society and can influence your career and, and how men and women can work together effectively. And so, um, you know, really anybody who touches the wellness space, we, we welcome spa directors, we welcome owners, we welcome decision makers. Um, I have some students coming who are coming up in the wellness world. We have some media and influencers in the wellness space. We have, um, like I said, representatives from brands who are coming. And we have people who are very peripherally involved who, you know, I have somebody coming who's running like a series of boxing studios in Southern California. So really anybody who's touching wellness, health, Anybody looking for growth and development in leadership is, is welcome and, and will get something out of this event. Fantastic. I love that it's so inclusive. So Julie, tell us a little bit more about you. What has been your biggest aha moment within your career? You know, it's, it's funny because I talked a little bit about this at Women in Wellness, where I actually really got to see the results of, of something that my team and I worked on. And, and I would say that's the same about American Spa, you know, and you know this, because you get really caught up in meeting the deadlines and hitting your budgets and getting things together and hitting your schedule that sometimes you forget that what you're doing really impacts people. So some of the best things that have happened is when I go into a spa and the, um, you know, the the magazine is out in the spa and somebody who works there comes up and tells me about how a story that we did helped them change something. Or, you know, I've, I've made introductions to people over the years when I hear of somebody looking for a job or I think of somebody who would be good for it. And, and when you just really make a difference in people's lives, I think that that has just been the most exciting part of my career. I mean, I, I love the journalism aspect of it. I love getting to know the wellness industry. I love seeing spas and writing about spas, but I really love connecting people. And that that's been, that's been the best and most exciting part of my career. Excellent. As a fellow connector, I understand <laughs> that aspect of your personality very well. <laughs> um, and what is your favorite spa treatment? You know, I always love a good scrub and massage treatment. I love to just feel nice and scrubbed down and just massaged and relaxed. So, you know, it's been fun over the years to do that in different ways with different ingredients, especially when you go somewhere where there's like a really authentic experience there. So that's always a favorite. Um, I recently had a treatment in a zero gravity bed that involved a time when you slept and I slept so hard for 20 minutes and I felt incredible. So I think that there's absolutely some credibility there with, with some of those, you know, zero gravity and sleep treatments that, that allow you to just refresh. I, I've had some really good ones there. Wonderful. I'll have to try that. <laughs> 
What is your advice for your younger self? I think it would just be to don't worry so much. Um, I'm I'm very type A and I tend to get very caught up in, you know, making sure everything is where it needs to be. And I've, I've tried to relax in that a little bit as I've gotten older and, you know, things always seem to work out. So I wish I, I'd like to say, say to myself, don't worry so much and enjoy the moment that you're in. Great advice. Yes. And what is your favorite quote or saying? You know, it's funny, my mom um, was a nurse for 40 years, and she recently retired, but she had this sign on her desk. And it said, um, everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. Be kind always. And I think that that's such a great piece of advice. You know, I, it's hard to do sometimes, especially, you know, when you encounter people that make it hard to be kind. But I think it's a great quote. And I think it's a great goal. Um, and also, it's, it's along those lines, if you can't be kind, be quiet. I tell my kids that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that is a very wise saying yes <laughs> so with credit to oprah winfrey for this question what do you know for sure oprah may even have said this at some point but i think that um it's so important to to make other people feel good and, and how you make people feel is what they will always remember and i also think that it's really important to work hard and work with integrity and it will always pay off. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in karma, and I think it always comes around, not necessarily when we want it to, but um, good or bad, I, I believe in karma. And I know for sure that being a good person, working hard and working with integrity are something that, that will always, always be important. Absolutely. The universe has a plan for everything, and it always, always seems to work out. Exactly. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for your information. Um, I hope that the Women in Wellness event is a huge success on the West Coast. And I know that there's still time for people to register if they want to get there at the end of October. It's on the 28th, is that correct? Yeah, it's October 28th at Huntington Beach at the Hilton Waterfront. Um, you can go to AmericanSpaWIW.com to get our agenda, to learn about our speakers, and, and most importantly, to register. So I very much hope that, uh, that um, anyone who's listening joins us. It's going to be a really unforgettable day. Wonderful. And in the magazine, Span Wellness Mexi Caribe, we will have a review of the event so people can read up about it after the fact if they weren't able to attend. Thank you so much for your time, Julie. It was great speaking with you today. Thank you so much, Sara. Thank you for listening to Sparkast by Span Wellness Mexi Caribe.